recording it right now. Okay. All right. So we're going to look at something called Pascal's triangle. And so I'm going to show you how to generate Pascal's triangle. Now, it's in your textbook. I think it's on like page 348, like in the top left-hand part of the page. Okay, But you're going to have to sort of learn how to generate what's called Pascal's triangle to do what we're going to do. So you're not going to understand why we're doing this okay, until we get to the point where we actually use this. Okay. Now, Pascal's triangle, the way I want you to think about this, is like um, bowling pins. All right, you know how bowling pins are arranged? Okay, so you start off with a one at the top, and then we're going to put a one here and a one here. So bowling pins, one is never directly behind the other. Okay, now, when we get to the next row, you have to be real neat with this, they always start off with one and one. Okay, or the ones go on the end here. So I'm going to put one, but now what I'm going to do for this middle one here is take these ones and add them together. So if I put one and one there, that would give me two, and then I'm going to bring down this one. Okay, now, so the ones, I mean, you're going to see one steadily going down. All right, now, so this will be one. Now, I'm going to put these two numbers together to get the next number. So what's this going to be here then? Three. Okay. And then 2 and 1 together right there would be 3. And then the last number is going to be 1. All right, do you all see the pattern? Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is, yeah, 6.8.1 video. Let me write that up. Say that when you open it up, okay? All right, now, so what's, what's this one going to start with? 1, all right, and then 4, 6, okay, 4, one. Do y'all get the pattern? Okay. So here we go. One. This one's going to be five, ten, ten, five, one. All right. I'm going to just go one more row and kind of stop. Okay. And you need to do this with me. Kind of, you know, keep it copied on your paper because we're going to use it in just a second. All right. This one's going to be one. This one's going to be right here. Six, fifteen, twenty. 15, 6, 1. Do y'all notice the symmetry? It's, it's got some symmetry to it, too, there. All right. Now, so let's kind of kind of flip on a new page here. And let me kind of show you what we're going to use this for. All right. Um, now, don't write this part down. But you remember how we expand x plus 7 quantity squared without having to do the full method. Yeah, you don't have to write this part down there, okay? Um, now, that was the full method, okay? So what was the shortcut? Yeah, square, square, twice the product. So it was x squared plus 14x plus 49, okay? And so that works pretty fast there when we got a square. I'll need it back in just a second there. All right, now, what if, though, we've got, like, x plus 7 quantity cubed? We really have a pattern there, didn't we? So if we wanted something like that, we would have to say, well, x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7, which would get, you know, we could do it. We could multiply it out. But that would get pretty long and drawn out. And now, what if we went something to high, even higher, like x plus 7 to the fifth power. Okay, I mean, that's going to be a lot, right? x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7. So that's a lot of falling and a lot of multiplying. Okay, now this is where Pascal's triangle comes in. All right, so Pascal's triangle kind of shortcuts this idea. All right, now, so let's look at this one. All right, y'all do this one with me. We're going to do, um, let's see, I don't want to do the same one. It won't work. A right, let's do this one. Let's do A plus B 
to the fifth power. Okay? Now, let me show you the basics first, and what we're going to do is we're going to use Pascal's triangle to fill in the coefficients. All right, so the coefficients are going to be missing, but we're going to use Pascal's triangle to get them. Now, let's start off with this. So I'm going to have a, a leading coefficient, and now this is going to be a and to the fifth power. Okay? Now, b here, what, what a is going to do, a is going to start at 5 and descend. So it's going to go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, nothing. B is going to start off with the zero power in ascend. Does that make sense? A is going to descend and, and B is going to ascend. So this B power would be B to the zero power. Now anything to the zero power is just one. So we're going to leave off B to the zero power. Right, now we're going to say plus. And now we're going to leave a blank for the coefficient. Now it's going to descend. So it's going to now going to be A to the fourth power and then b to the first power. Does that make sense here? So we went 5, 4, this one went the b, b to the 0, now b to the first. All right, now let's see if y'all can get this part. So this is going to be a to the third, all right, and then b squared, all right, plus all right, blank. Now a squared, b to the third, all right, plus, I'm going to have to go down here because it's so long. All right, this would be a to the first, b to the fourth, plus, all right, leave a blank. Now, this would be a to the zero, which is just one. Okay, so we just leave it off. All right, so just b to the fifth. Okay, now, what's missing, though, is the coefficients. Now, let's go back to Pascal's triangle. Okay, so this kind of, you kind of need to, like, keep Pascal's triangle in one hand and your problem in the other. All right, that's okay, too. All right, now. On Pascal's triangle, all right, we call this one, we don't call it the first row, we call it the zeroth row. Okay? And you'll see why in a second. All right? So I don't know, that's kind of weird. And so this one is actually the one that we call the first row. And then second, third, fourth, and so on. Okay, but you call the first one the zeroth row. So what happens is the first row never helps you with anything. Okay, now, what we expanded was a plus b to the fifth. So to fill in these coefficients, I'm going to go to the fifth row of Pascal's triangle. So we go to the fifth row. So you see these numbers on the fifth row? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Those are going to be those coefficients. Okay, see how Pascal's triangles working now? It tells you the binomial expansion. It tells you the coefficients on the variables. All right, so look at look at Pascal's triangle. Okay, look at the fifth row. So what was that coefficient there? One. Now, do we really need to have to write a one coefficient? No. So, I mean, we really don't write anything right there. All right, but the next one there is going to be, let me just follow it so y'all can see it. There's the fifth row. Okay, so now we got to do is fill in these coefficients. So the next one's going to be, what, 5, and then 10, 10, 5, and of course 1, and you really don't have to write the 1. All right, see how that works? Okay, so, all right, now you could do that, or you could do A plus B times A plus B times A plus B. All right, so Pascal's triangles kind of works a little faster, doesn't it? Okay, so that's what it's used for. And it really has good use in calculus when you have to really have to deal with stuff to power powers like that. All right, let's do this. Um, let's see if y'all can help me do now. Let's do A plus B to the sixth power. Let's try that one. All right, so let's see. All right, let's start off. We're going to go, what, A to the 6th, and then B to the 0, so don't worry about B. All right, so now we're going to descend. Now, I didn't leave a blank here because I know that leading coefficient is always going to be 1. All right, so plus, now we're going to have a coefficient on the next one. We'll get it off Pascal's triangle in a second. All right, so A to the 5th, B to the 1st. 
Okay, I'm going to go start going pretty fast. So this one's going to be a to the fourth b squared plus a cubed b cubed plus a squared b to the fourth plus, what's it going to be now? a, all right, b to the fifth, all right, plus b to the sixth, and I'm all, the coefficient there is just going to be one. The leading coefficient and the last coefficient always turn out to be one. Now, all we got to do is take our Pascal's triangle here, and we're going to look on the sixth row. And fill in the coefficients. So we got one. All right, our next one's going to be six, 15, 20, 15, six, and then one. All right. Now, yeah, now what we're going to do here, let's look at what happens if we say minus right there. Okay, it's not really that big of a deal. All right, right, it's just negative. All right, so let's put in a minus right there. And we won't go to like to the sixth. Let's just like go to the, the third. All right. So it's not like so long and drawn out. All right. Or let's, I tell you what, let's go to the fourth power. Okay. All right. So what if it is minus? All right. A minus B. So let's say to the fourth power. Okay. Now the way that I'm going to look at it is I'm going to think of it as A plus negative B to the fourth. Okay, so it's exactly kind of like what she's just said. We're going to put in negative b in place this time. Now think about it. What's going to happen when I raise, think about negative b to an odd power? Right, it's going to make that coefficient negative. Okay, and when I raise it to an even power though, yeah, it's positive, so it's not going to change anything. Okay, now Let's expand it here. So we're going to the fourth power. So we're going to start off with a to the fourth, okay, plus, all right, here's something, a cubed. And then instead of b, we're going to put negative b. Now, you see how in a minute that's going to make that coefficient negative when we multiply it out? Okay. Some of you don't see it. You'll see it in just a minute. All right, plus something. Now this is going to be what a squared. Then what? Minus negative. Yeah, my, all right, right. Negative b squared plus something here, a, and then negative b cubed plus. Now a is going away, so now b is going to go, or negative b is going to go to the fourth. Okay. Now let's write it down here. And or let's let's go ahead and fill in the coefficients. All right. So my fourth row of Pascal's triangle. All right. Yeah. Four, six, four. Okay. Now, let's get rid of these negative b's. So this is going to still be a to the fourth. So what's going to happen? Negative b to the first power is just going to make all this be negative. So this is going to change to minus four a cubed b. But now negative b squared, so is that going to change that to negative? No. So what the even exponents are going to basically stay the same, and then the odd exponents, this, the coefficient is going to change to a negative. Okay. And you can really do a shortcut there. And you don't really have to show as much work when you do it with a negative like this. So when you see that pattern. Now this one's going to change to negative 4ab cubed. And then this one's not going to change because to the fourth power is be plus c to the fourth. Okay. Now, let's take it one step further. All right. Let's try this one. Let's actually put in some numbers like we normally see. So, you know, realistically, we're not going to have a's and b's. All right. We're going to probably have a variable and a number, say like this. All right, I'm going to show you. So let's take x plus 5 quantity cubed, and let's not do x plus 5 times x plus 5 times x plus 5. All right, let's do it. No, we're going to use Pascal's triangle. Okay, now maybe on this one it would be a little bit easier to do it that way, 
but you know, especially if I got to the fourth or the fifth or the sixth power, it would get pretty difficult. So let's do this. Let's expand it with Pascal's triangle. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of looking at x plus 5 to the third power, let's change it back to a's and b's. Okay. So what I'm going to do is expand this in terms of a's and b's because I know how to do it with that. And then once I get it filled in, I can substitute. Instead of a's, I'll put x's. And instead of b's, we'll just put 5's. Now, the thing with the 5 is we'll have to actually evaluate it and multiply it by the coefficient. Okay, so let's watch here. All right, this is, let's see. Let me, we won't have to, a coefficient here. This would be what, a to the third plus something a squared b plus something a b squared plus b cubed. Okay, now, y'all check Pascal's triangle. I want y'all to look and tell me now, what are the, the coefficients here? This one's what? Right here. One, all right, and then three and three. Okay, now what we're going to do is just do some substitution. So for x plus five quantity cubed, we're going to put x in place of a, and we're going to put five in place of b. All right, so now, instead of a cubed, we're going to write x cubed, all right, plus 3. Now, instead of a squared, it'll be x squared. Hey, yes? How do you like the call to check out? Okay. All right, now, instead of b, we're going to put 5. And so, on our next step, that's going to be 15x squared, okay? Then we'll wait. I'm going to fill it all in first, all right? Plus, all right, 3. Instead of a, we're going to put x. And instead of b squared, we're going to think 5 squared, which would be 25, okay, plus. Now, b cubed, we're going to put 5 in place of b, so 5 cubed is 125. Sometimes you get some really big numbers when you do some expansions here, and you kind of need your calculator to help you. Right, now, let's clean these up right here, and then we'll have that expanded. So we'll get x cubed plus this will be 15x squared. That'll be, what, 75x plus 125. All right. Now, let's do one that, that gets a little bit long and drawn out. Okay? And then this will be the last one here. All right. Let's do, let's do x minus 3 to the fifth power. Okay? Right. So what we want to do first here is be a plus negative b to the fifth. Okay, and once we get it figured out, then we'll put x in for a, and then we'll put 3 in for b. Okay? All right, so let's do the a's and the b's first. All right, so this is going to be a to the what? Fifth. And then no, no b. All right, plus, now this will be a to the fourth times negative b, All right, plus a cubed times negative b squared, plus a squared times negative b cubed, plus a <laughs> times negative b to the fourth, plus... I'm lost now. B to the fifth. Negative B to the fifth. Okay. All right. Now, let's fill in the coefficients. All right. So we're looking at, let's see, which row? Fifth row. All right. So I'm looking at my Pascal's triangle on the fifth row. We got one and then five, ten, ten, five, and one. Okay. Now, at this point, what we could do here is we could put our 3 in place of the B. Or Do y'all want to get rid of the negative signs there first? Can you get rid of the negatives? Yeah. I kind of, fifth period kind of said the same thing. All right. So we've got A to the fifth. So now, is this one going to be negative now? Yeah. It's be negative 5, A to the fourth, B. 
All right, would this one change to negative? No. All right, because right, you're squared. All right, so it's just going to be plus 10a cubed b squared. Now this one would change to negative. All right, that one would stay plus. And this one would change to negative. Okay, now. So what are we going to put in for A now? X. Okay. And then for B, all we have to put in is not negative 3, just 3, because we've already accounted for the negative. All right. So this is going to be X to the 5th minus 5X to the 4th. What are we putting in there? 3. Okay, so in my next step, it's going to be negative 15. All right. Next one plus 10X cubed. Now, Put in 3 there. 3 squared would be 9. Okay, minus 10 x squared. Now I'm going to put in 3 to the third, which is 27 plus 5x. Now b to the fourth, 3 to the fourth power would be 81. And that, that would probably be something you would need to punch in your calculator. Okay. Now minus, what's 3 to the fifth for me? Punch that in because I don't know. I think it's 243. Oh, I did know it. Excuse me, teacher. Okay. Now let's clean it up. Seventh hour soccer report. And this will be negative 15. That would be 90. Also, cheerleaders. Negative 270. Somebody do that for me. 5 times 81. All right, thank you. X minus 243. That's it. Is that the coolest thing ever? Yeah. Seventh. 